Hey squad, welcome back. Now today we're continuing our series Producing in Colour. Now the concept of producing in colour is about mixing things up, adding different sounds, different tones, different rhythms and different feels to your production. So consider yourself as an artist, a painter, and if you were always using exactly the same colours and the same shapes when you're painting, it's going to get kind of boring. So the same principle applies to music production. Try and mix things up by adding different instruments and different vibes to your canvas. And I assure you, your body of work will be far more interesting. Anyway, today we're going to be producing a 90s R&B style track. Now the 90s for me was a really rich time for R&B. A lot of transition was taking place and you had incredible acts emerging like Mary J. Blige, Guy, Blackstreet, Jodeci, SWV and a whole lot more. But one thing that really stood out for me was the production techniques that were employed. And one of my favorite producers of all time, of course, is Teddy Riley. And he was one of the architects of the 90s sound. So today I'm gonna to be harking back to that period and try and create something that will work today, but will have the flavor of the 90s. Now don't forget to check out the other videos in this series. There'll be a link on the screen as well as in the description. And remember, if you're feeling what I'm doing, like the video, subscribe to the channel and drop me a comment. It's always great hearing from you. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so I've got an idea of the foundation chord progression that everything is going to be built on. I'm going to demonstrate that in a minute. But the kind of vibe I want to create today is something quite pretty. Something that will be a typical R&B slow jam from the 90s. So the tones that I select, the instruments I select, the sounds that I'm going to be using are really important and really have to represent that smooth vibe. So there'll be a number of different keyboard layers, which I'll break down to you as we go along. But let me show you the foundation chord progression on the electric piano. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down now and instead of using the standard electric piano in Logic, I'm going to be using the Scarby A200, which comes as part of Native Instruments Complete. Now, one key thing that I want to point out is the tempo. Now, the tempo at the moment I've got set to 140 and that was not a typical tempo setting for the 90s. I'm going to stick to 140 because of the trap style hi-hats I'm going to be laying down later on. It just makes life a little bit easier. But typically this will be at 70 BPM. Anyway, let me put this down. Okay, something you need to bear in mind whenever you're laying down keyboard parts from the very start of the production from bar one. As you can see here, I've rolled my keyboard notes in. So some of the notes are cutting off um, so because the, the start point is before, just slightly before bar one. So have a listen. Okay, so what we got to do here is we can do this one of two ways. I can actually bring this to bar two and then pull this out like so. I can get the roll of the chord right at the beginning. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, of course, is lining everything up at the start of the bar like so, and the chord will hit exactly on the bar like so. Okay, I've just quantized that section. I'm not quantizing anything else. You can just quantize this first chord. Anyway, I'm going to lay down a couple more keyboard parts. I think some piano and maybe some reverse piano just to kind of create the atmosphere that I'm looking for. Then I'll explain to you exactly what I've done. 
Okay, so as you can see right here, I've got three additional piano parts. So I've got my main keys, which is this one, the one I already laid down. Okay, and then I've got these um, additional ones. So this one here is just a straight up grand piano. Let's play that back. So I've just played some additional chords on top of the main keys using pretty much the same notes but inverting them so I can bring out new colours. So I focused on using notes that are higher up on the keyboard range to avoid them clashing with the tones that are lower down. And this of course will bring out the brightness and prettiness that I'm looking for. So let's hear these together. Okay, another thing I've done down here is I've gone for the reverse piano. And all I've done is use these piano sections and I've chopped them up into segments. I've done videos on this before and simply bounce them down as individual audio segments, then reversed each chord. So you end up with this. Okay, and what I've done as well on the channel strip, I've got a few things going on. I've got a stereo delay, the auto filter, which really works nicely. And I've got the kickstart, which gives me a bit of movement. Now let's hear these two together, just real quick. Okay, so all three. Okay, really building up a lovely picture using great colors. Now, just down here, this part right here is exactly the same as this one. Okay, these two are the same. But what I've done on this track is I've brought in the kickstart and I've used it as an envelope. So I've cut off the attack portion of the notes. And that's the great thing about this uh, little plugin is you can do so much. So I've taken off the attack and now switched on. Okay, so when we move to the second eight bars, we switch to this more laid back, more legato tone. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so the next set of colors I'm gonna be adding, of course, is my guitar. And as I've said many times before, I'm not a guitarist. I just know a few chords and I don't mind giving it a go. Now, the chords I'm going to use are really simple. Okay, in terms of putting it down, it's going to take me forever to do this. I'm probably going to use a different technique. I'm probably going to pluck my goal like this but the changes are going to be challenging for me. What I'll probably end up doing, slowing down the production, laying the guitar, and then using flex time, speeding it up, and I'm sure it will maintain the integrity I'm looking for. I might even use my semi-acoustic for it. I'm not quite sure yet, depending on the tone, but let me put this down and then I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so here's the guitar part. Um, like I said, it took me ages to get this down, but I'm happy with the results now. So let me play this back and we can then move on to the next section. Okay, so for the drums, I'm going to keep things quite simple, nothing too complicated, and just a few layers. Um, the first thing I've done so far, in fact, is I've laid down a very basic hi-hat pattern. 
And I've also used a technique which I've shown you guys before on how to use the arpeggiator to create some rhythm for you. So let me play back the basic hi-hat, then I'll switch in the arpeggiator so you can see what happens. So here's the hi-hat track and the pattern. So let me just play that back uh, for you without the arpeggiator switched on. Okay, now let's switch in the arpeggiator. Okay, so it's operating at, at a one eighth rate and giving me a nice little pattern there. Okay, let's switch that off again. So I'll put a link up top to my video showing you how you can use the arpeggiator in your productions. Anyway, I'm gonna put down a kick drum and a rim shot to go with the pattern here and then we'll move on. Okay, so now we've got the drums down and I've added some finger snaps and uh, some open hi-hats. And I just kind of quantize things a little bit, make it a little bit tighter. When it comes to 90s R&B, the rhythm section is pretty tight. Now the next thing I want to do is lay down a pad section. I always like my nice pads or pad string sort of sounds. So I'm going to go for something like this. Okay, so let's put this down and then we'll move on. But one of the key components of the 90s R&B sound is those little synth trinkets, little analog sounding melody lines, little bells here and there. Um, I'll be adding some of those and I'll break it down and show you how I've incorporated them just to build up that bigger, wider sound. Again, we're adding extra colors to create that emotional effect. Okay, so let me edit this. I'll put down the other parts and then I'll break it down to you. So as you can hear, they still follow the path of the foundation chord progression. A couple of things that you notice as well is I'm creating gaps. So everything's not necessarily playing all at the same time. Here you can see the pad is playing a couple of chords here. Then we cut at this section. Then it comes back in. Let's go through these real quick. So we've got these bells right here. Real simple, but adding a nice bright color to the piece. Again, adds a nice little lift, different color, but still staying within the feel of the production. Let's bring this one in. Okay, another layer, a bit higher up, but not too dominant. Just adding something in those higher frequencies up in the air, just brightening things once again. We want this thing to sound pretty, and that's what we're going for. Another melody, let's play that back. Okay. Um, and this one right here is very typical of the sort of sound that you'd find in 
an 80s R&B track. It'll be some sort of sine wave sound like this. Now let's hear that together. Okay, we're almost there. All I've got left to do now is lay down the 808 bass, I'll arrange it, and then we'll play out. So I've arranged the track, I've added some trap style hi-hats, and that's one of the reasons why I went for the double time at 140 BPM. Just makes it a lot easier to punch those hi-hats in. So let me play that back for you. Now these trap style hats will play in the main section like the chorus and in the sort of versy type section where there's less going on I'll use my other hats, the ones that I demonstrated earlier. The other thing that I've done is I've laid down my bass line and the bass line is actually generated from the ES2 software synth and this is it right here. Now if you want to download this bass patch, drop me a note in the comment section and then I'll put a link to download in the description. But we're actually there now. The track is arranged and all of the elements are in. I'm just going to put a few things on to the master bus just to give it that extra bit of weight. I'm also going to use maybe some tape saturation. I'll probably use something like the Waves J37 to add a bit of tape saturation. I'm definitely putting it through the Aphex Exciter. And, and then we'll play out. Now you, remember you can check out my material on Spotify and this one will be finished off pretty soon and uploaded there. stuff i really do hope you found the video useful if you did drop me a line in the comment section like the video and subscribe to the channel this will really help me out now remember to support me at dospeech.com as well as on my social media channels and finally switch on that notification bell so just like the rest of the mttc squad you'll find out as soon as my next video drops until next time i'm dr deuce peace